Five things give directions to the lands of gold. There is a lost land that recurs in the histories, myths, and traditions of the Phoenicians, Jews, Greeks, and Chinese. The missing piece of real estate was supposedly a part of a larger landmass that the Greeks called Orea Chersonesus, the Golden Peninsula, in which Crese, the island of gold, would be found. China called it Chin Lin. Golden neighbor, and a specific island within this larger area was given the name Chinchu, Gold Island. Similarly, India has tales of Zuvarna Bumi, where Zuvarna Dvipa, the island of gold, is located. Jews and Phoenicians call this land by the most ancient name, the lands of Tarshish and Ophir. Direction number one comes from the Bible. The Bible tells us that after the flood, the world was repopulated by Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ancient texts, traditions, and maps show that the lands north of the Mediterranean went to Japheth, the continent of Europa. Ham got the southern lands west of the Red Sea, Africa, while Shem got the southern lands to the east, the continent of Asia. Eber, great grandchild of Shem, son of Noah was the father of Joktan, the father of Ophir. Ophir and his brothers were given the lands to the east of this southern domain. Now their settlement extended from Mesha, as you go toward Sephar, the hill country of the east. Being one of the youngest sons of Joktan, Ophir may have taken southern lands of the far east, at the very ends of the earth. The Bible gives us a location for Ophir at the edge of southeast Asia. But then scriptures often mention the land of Ophir in connection with the lands of Tarshish, and this gives us further directions. Tarshish was the grandchild of Japheth by his son Javan. Japheth was the son of Noah, who was allotted the northern part, above the Mediterranean Sea. We are told regarding Tarshish and his brothers that from these the coastlands of the nations were separated into their lands, every one according to his language, according to their families, into their nations. So we know that Tarshish came from somewhere in the northern region, and he must have gone east, since that's where Ophir went, north and east. The Bible also tells us that Tarshish lived in the islands at the very ends of the earth. So we're looking for islands. That are at the very end of the earth, where north meets south. These islands would have at least two very distinct indigenous people groups: the descendants of Ophir, who lived on the hills and mountains, similar to our Aitas, and the children of Tarshish, who settled along the coastlands of the rivers and seas, like our Austronesian people. Direction number two comes from second-century Greece, Ptolemy's world map. Applying geometry and mathematics to the study of Earth's geography, second-century Ptolemy used scientific methods to project a sphere of the Earth onto a flat surface, making a world map that listed eight thousand places, including the Orea Chersonesus, the Golden Peninsula, where Crese, Gold Island, could be found. Scholars believe that the area he referred to as the Golden Peninsula is the area we know today as the Malay Peninsula. Number three, the Periplus of the Erythrian Sea, a guide to navigation and trade in the waters of the Red Sea, Persian Gulf, and Indian Ocean. The Periplus of the Erythrian Sea gives us directions on how to get to Crese, the island of gold. And just opposite the river Ganges, there is an island in the ocean, the last part of the inhabited world toward the east, under the rising sun itself. It is called Crese. The Periplus also tells us. The China was directly north of Crese. After this region, under the very north, the sea outside ending in a land called this, China. If one were to draw an eastward line from the mouth of the Ganges, as directed by the Periplus of the Erythrian Sea, to the last large inhabited island in the ocean, we hit the Philippines. Then, from the Philippines, a line drawn north would hit China. Number four. Documento número noventa y ocho. 
a guide to navigation and trade like the Periplus, compiled by our Spanish colonizers, give directions from the African coast to the Red Sea, the Persian Gulf and the Indian Ocean to the Ganges River. From the Ganges, it seems that they traveled the inland rivers to the Asian kingdoms, under the heading Lusos, in the subheading Ophir, followed by these details. In front of this mentioned China and its land, there are many islands in the sea and beyond these islands, a land very large that they say it is Tierra Firme, and other islands where every year they used to arrive three or four juncos with white people that are big merchants and very wealthy, and they bring lots of gold in bars and silver, and silk and lots of very good wheat, and very beautiful porcelains, and other things that the Chinese carry. To those they call Lusos, and those of Malak, Malaysia, say they are better people and better traders and wealthier, and better dressed and more honest than the Chinese. The Philippine archipelago with the large land masses of Luzon and Mindanao, strategically located in the sea between China and Malaysia, with a long history of trade with both nations, fit the geographical details. White merchants, described by others as bearded men, could have been the few surviving Phoenician merchants who may have later settled and integrated with the Philippine population. Number 5. The Voyages and Adventures of Ferdinand Mendez Pinto Traveling in the service of the Portuguese crown, Ferdinand Mendez Pinto wrote in his journal of his shipwreck on the island of Lusos while passing through Malay Archipelago. He described Lusos as belonging to a large group of islands that had abundant resources of gold and silver. In his journal, he had the audacity to give specific details on the location of the gold island, putting it in a latitude 9 and 20 on a meridian similar to that of Japan. Directions that lead us to the very heart of the Philippines, the northern shores of Mindanao, near Butuan and Agusan. The meridian is slightly off. Japan is around 135 degrees, while Philippines is at 125 degrees. But the meridian was not officially set until 1851. So for someone living in the 1500s, he did very well. The story of his shipwreck was deemed so outrageous that it was omitted from his book when it was first published. This did not stop Pinto from campaigning to the Portuguese crown, who had established colonies, conquered all along the southern coast, as Malacca, Bauda, Maluco, Sunda, Borneo, and Timor, to conquer the lands to the north, and northwards, China, Japan, and Lusos. Someone must have believed him for a remarkable map by Abraham Ortelius, the Maris Pacifici, the first printed map of the Pacific and the first map of the Americas, shows the Philippine Islands with both its old and new names, Islas de Lusos and Filipinas. An inscription in Fort Santiago, attributed to the Philippine national hero, José Rizal, says, To foretell the destiny of a nation, it is necessary to open the book that tells of her past. Thank you for joining us in opening the book of the past, in hopes for a brighter future. Learning history, five things at a time.